Okay, you can rest, sit. The 26th of August, the Bourbon Argos, one of MSF's search and rescue ships, has on board 800 people rescued in two operations in just one day. They're from Syria, Côte d'Ivoire or Mali. I'm very relieved and happy. Uh, it all went well. Everyone seemed to be, to be okay, just exhausted and uh, dehydrated. Uh, Extraordinary, extraordinary. In a little over three months, MSF teams have rescued 11,482 people, mainly off the coast of Libya. At the beginning of August, this Syrian couple and their little girl survived the sinking of their makeshift boat. I lifted her up and shook her to make her bring up the water she had swallowed. I can swim, but she can't. 200,000 of the 300,000 people who have already crossed the Mediterranean Sea this year have landed in Greece. European regulations stipulate migrants must be registered in the first country in the Union they enter. But there is no system in Greece to deal with such large numbers of migrants and refugees. This system is not good. Uh, may I already stay here seven days? My friend is 20 days stay here. No food, no water, no um, others. No water. This is very dangerous. There are several thousand refugees on the island of Kos. As there are no reception facilities, they live out in the open, with no protection from the blazing sun. Some are directed by officials to a stadium where there's no drinking water or sanitation. At one of the sites where migrants have set up their own refuge, MSF teams distribute basic necessities and provide medical consultations. We are really focused on the mobile street clinic which we usually uh, see more vulnerable groups like pregnant women, uh, infants, children and uh, handicapped patients. Mostly uh, what we see is respiratory tract infection, uh, traumatology while those people uh, are, are, are sleeping in the streets uh, uh, due to the traveling conditions, uh, skin diseases and uh, common cold mostly to babies because they are more sensitive in, in, in the weather condition and sleeping outside. As there's nothing for them here, many migrants opt to continue their way across Europe. From Greece, they have to pass through Macedonia. On the 20th and 21st of August, Macedonian troops fired tear gas and stun grenades to disperse thousands of refugees trying to cross over the Greek border. An MSF medical team treated 110 casualties in just two days. The Macedonian authorities finally allowed them through, enabling the refugees to continue their journey until they encounter the next hurdle. Médecins Sans Frontières staff are tending to a one-year-old boy in the Mobala Community Health Center. He's suffering from severe malnutrition. Malnutrition weakens the immune system. A malnourished child who gets diarrhea needs to be treated straight away before his condition deteriorates further, as is the case with this child. He has diarrhea, but he was already suffering from malnutrition. Tiamoku is transferred immediately to Kutiala Hospital, where MSF works. One week later, his health has improved. I didn't think he'd live. I'm so pleased with the treatment he's had. Children arriving at the hospital in Kutiala are often critically ill. 
Setting up similar activities across the region in community health centres like the one in Mubala has enabled teams to not only improve disease prevention and patient follow-up, but also to accelerate identification of seriously ill patients. Four years of conflict in Syria, 12 years of war and violence in Iraq, repeated Israeli offensives against Gaza, and years of instability in Yemen culminating in the current conflict, the stream of seriously wounded patients who have no access to specialized quality care in their home countries is endless. Al Mwasa Hospital in Jordanian capital Amman is the only facility in the region to provide such treatment. We are receiving patients from different countries, Iraq, Syria and Yemen for the main ones. And we are building also network, uh, scientific and academic network with different universities uh, uh, in France, for example, and, and, uh, and other countries. So Al Mwasa will allow us to raise a bit our profile uh, in, in these in this medical activities and welcome uh, researchers in microbiology, in surgery, in our programs, so we could develop this kind of, uh, of network. Deploying highly specialized medicine to respond to huge medical needs. At the heart of the Middle East, Jordan is one of the few stable countries in the region able to accommodate such a hospital. In 1979, eight years after MSF was founded, Jacques Pinel described it as an organization without organization. Working as a pharmacist in refugee camps in Thailand, he had been appalled by the model of boxes of drugs stacked under tarpaulins and decided order was required. The first pre-prepared kits came into being, and along with a series of guidelines and lists of essential medicines, they became the cornerstone of logistics at MSF and the means to enhance operational effectiveness. These days, logistics are organized between MSF teams in the field, at head office and its purchasing centers. Literally thousands of logisticians work in the field maintaining the cold chain during vaccination campaigns, servicing vehicles, and setting up hospital tents. They are tasked with ensuring the smooth running of communications, particularly radio, vehicles from dugout canoes to four-wheel drives, power supply, water and sanitation, biomedical equipment for treating patients, supply and storage of medical and non-medical items used in the programs. Supervisors, based at MSF's head office, provide support to the logisticians, assessing needs according to the situation. Somewhere in the world, large numbers of refugees are converging. The emergency health kit contains everything required to provide 10,000 people with emergency assistance for three months. Warehoused in one of MSF's logistics centres, kits can be dispatched to the field within 24 hours. Essential medicines integrated into MSF's standardised guidelines also transit via these centres. Technicians, specialised in, for example, water sanitation or vehicle maintenance, make visits to the field projects to assist the teams. From the boxes of medicines piled up in a tent in 1979 to the setting up in 2015 of a water treatment plant to combat cholera in Congo or the installation of solar panels to provide an office running a malaria treatment program in Chad with an independent power supply, almost 40 years after that intervention in Thai refugee camps, MSF's logisticians continue to reinvent their craft.
Le moment le plus fort pour moi de ma mission, ça a été la relocalisation des réfugiés euh, du camp de Letchior au camp de Djewi. Euh, à Letchior, où on était présent, il y avait 50 000 réfugiés qui vivaient dans des conditions abominables et on a trouvé un nouveau site, euh, enfin les autorités ont trouvé un nouveau site au mois d'avril. Euh, la relocalisation s'est passée très très vite, en trois semaines, chaque jour il y avait 4 000 réfugiés qui arrivaient et c'était un peu une lune de miel euh, entre euh, les ONG, les autorités, le HCR, parce que tout le monde faisait de son mieux pour que ça se passe bien. Euh, nous, on était là à l'arrivée pour euh, faire un screening médical des, des, des gens vulnérables, des femmes enceintes, des gens malades. Euh, les gens du HCR étaient là pour amener un peu, famille par famille les gens à leur, à leur emplacement. Save the Children s'occupait des enfants, on accompagnait. Tout le monde travaillait jusqu'après la tombée de la nuit pour pouvoir accueillir ces gens. Euh, C'était plutôt un très beau moment où, euh, où tout fonctionnait plutôt bien. Après, la réalité nous a rattrapés et ça a un peu fini en divorce. Il n'y a clairement pas suffisamment d'eau qui est fournie aux réfugiés. Il n'y a pas assez de latrines, pas assez d'abri. Donc le niveau de service laisse quand même beaucoup à désirer. Et ce qui m'inquiète le plus, c'est que MSF a été obligé de se retirer de Jewi. Euh, on n'a pas été capable de trouver un, un modus operandi avec, avec les, les autorités qui nous, qui nous satisfaisaient. Donc notre hôpital a été repris par les autorités qui n'ont clairement pas les mêmes capacités. Et vu les problèmes sanitaires dans ce camp et les problèmes de latrine d'eau, etc., euh, la population est très vulnérable à différents types d'épidémies de, de, euh, et, et d'urgences. Et vu qu'on n'est pas là, évidemment, ça m'inquiète un peu euh, euh, le sort de cette population pour les, pour les mois à venir. Thank you.